Hi Alice, so this is the day after the filming from the night before. I was in St Ives until uh, about 7 or 8 o'clock yesterday from 11am, so it was a very long day, very draining, following photographer Paul Massey around. Um, one thing I didn't prepare for was the, that he would have his girlfriend or wife, I'm not sure what her relation was, but with him, and he was very happy to be on camera, but she wasn't. And uh, that's fine, totally within her rights not to want to be on the film. Um, but it was just very awkward because they were constantly together and reviewing each other's work. And I think she typically writes the words for articles that they try and sell the photographs uh, t to the press and, and publications and things. And he takes the photos. But he likes her to look at the photos as a kind of fresh eye on what he's done to see and judge and, you know, help give insights and things like that so it was quite difficult to film him doing his work without getting this woman in the shots as well but you know totally within her rights to not want to be in the film that's absolutely fine but that was just another challenge that I didn't expect just have to go with and improvise on uh, at the time which which I did um, I was very pleased as well at the end of it I got a really good interview with Paul an exterior interview on the beach uh, I think he was framed medium long shot and uh, the building Portmere Studios were in the backdrop and he was on the beach and I thought this was relevant because he discovered the actual place when he was on holiday and walking on the beach and I thought well it makes sense to the narrative of this particular character in the story so so that was my reasoning for uh, for that location and it worked quite well. Um, got the radio mic on him so there wasn't too much kind of background noise from the sea but I had a backup in case the radio mic failed of a boom mic um, but because the distance between the boom and him was much further than the, the lapel mic on his on his shirt that meant that uh, you know if I did have to use that as a backup there would be a greater distance and therefore more kind of noise interfering with his audio luckily reviewed it and it looks okay and although I came back last night thinking oh god you know it's it's been a bit of a nightmare. When I actually reviewed the footage, it was much better than I expected, so I'm, I'm quite glad that I, I reviewed it. And the sound issues I thought I may have had actually seemed fine, so, so that was good. Um, one of the other things I hadn't... Well, I'd kind of prepared for just in case, but didn't expect, was to be interviewing one of the fishermen. And um, the person I was supposed to be meeting was nowhere to be found, so I wandered around, having a wee look for him, and met one of the excuse me, netters I think they're called in one of the net lofts and he makes nets as the name implies and uh, he was a really nice guy Chris his name was and uh, and yeah got chatting to him, he was happy to do an interview um, and so got the camera out and just did an interview with him handheld while he was doing his thing it's called a process interview so he was, he was doing the, the netting that he has to do all the way along and uh, that meant he was more natural and whatnot when I was asking the questions than he would otherwise have been had he just been staring you know, at a camera that was literally just rolling at him, which can put a lot of interviewees off, as you can imagine. Whereas if they're doing their thing, you know, they're not, not really looking at the camera, uh, come across much more natural and it just, just looks better. So yeah, so I was pleased with that. Whereas a photographer, I kind of staged it a lot and he's used to things being staged because he's a photographer obviously so he was quite comfortable and natural with that so that was, that was good and actually following him around was really interesting because the stuff he does is uh, really beautifully composed and uh, I think it benefited a lot of my shots actually and just watching him work made me kind of think of a couple of ideas of when I go and film with the artist next week and do my proper interviews with them so uh, so it was good, yeah, it was a really good day. And um, today, basically just been trying to get some stuff sorted with my other project that I'm doing, which is a horror piece provisionally titled Choker, about a pathological killer who is usurped by a woman he tries to kill who ultimately is found to be a killer as well, but a better one. So uh, yeah, that's kind of where that is. But I need an actress for it. I've got an actor playing the part, but I've just been contacting a local theatre company in Truro uh, to see if they have an actor and then I'll update them with an updated script once it's updated over the weekend because at the moment it's still an early draft stage and a couple of scenes are going to change so I'll try and do that and then I was looking into locations I want to film in a lift now so I contacted Otis Lifts 
they're one of the two main companies in Britain who make lifts. I spoke to a guy there, I put him on the spot a little bit, but he was really helpful and gave me a list of places to contact, hotels and car parks and things that had decent sized lifts that he could think of based on the description I was giving him. And so I'll get in touch with those either over the weekend or the start of next week and have a look from the, at them myself. Um, other thing, I was looking for a mattress that I want to be able to do anything with. And so I looked for a, a landfill site because one of the scenes is a mattress that gets soaked in blood. So, you know, I want to just use a, a kind of a, an old mattress for that, obviously. And uh, so I was looking into the local landfill site. So I called up the council. They put me in touch with the local one in Cornwall, which is synced. Um, Let's have a look. St. Day and uh, called them, but it just went to voicemail, so I left a message. So hopefully they'll get back to me because I just want to find out the kind of opening times. Then I can maybe go and have a look, see, scurry around, see if it's okay to take stuff away. But I uh, have to speak to them and find out about that. So, yeah, so that's essentially where I'm at with that. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So I'm going to be trying to update my storyboards, trying to do a little cut of this Paul Massey interview to which I referred before and uh, yeah hopefully that's it I'll try and put something if I do do that on Jing Project or I show you and upload it to the site and then that'll sort of show me editing and all that kind of stuff and hopefully help uh, so yeah I mean the lesson pretty much from yesterday was always be prepared for the unpreparable even though that doesn't really make sense but uh, you know if I'd gone in I had no idea at absolutely what I was going to ask the fisherman then you know it would have been a much poorer interview than the fact that I thought about it beforehand just in case something like that came up and I had done the same thing with any of the artists as well which I didn't end up interviewing because I, I didn't want to do it until I was completely ready but uh, you know I was, I was happy that I had that as a backup in case the photographer wasn't happy with me filming him and I had to do something else to make it worthwhile me coming through to St. Ives so yeah so uh so make sure you do that and the other thing is to make sure you always have your interview release forms and other release forms with you and get the signatures there and then because uh, these guys the photographer uh, they were based in London so I mean had I not got the signature from Paul for his contribution then uh, you know that would have been a nightmare trying to trying to chase them up to get get the, the signature so I was very pleased I did that and the fisherman I got that straight away so I was very pleased to got that organised. So apart from trying to creatively think and frame shots and think about this, that and the other and what's going to be good for edit points here and there and wherever and oh how should that be framed, should it be like that, you know, ooh, I'm not really sure. You have to kind of get your formal hat on and make sure you get the forms all signed, dotted, sealed and, you know, sent away so and you can come away feeling happy. So I was very pleased with, with that in the end. Anyway, that's pretty much me so uh, I'll catch you later. Bye!